Show business is not all bright lights and applause. There's a lot of hard work that goes on backstage, making that name on the marquee truly shine. Ten minutes, this is your ten minute call. Test, one, two, two, two. Okay, go on the next one to Joe. The all-important sound system must be checked and levels set. Overhead lights are hauled into place. Then all the lights are set and programmed. And go. Stand by four. And go. The stage manager calls five. Minutes, five. five minutes to showtime. Final checks are made. Places, please. Stem, take out the main. Then. And curtain going up. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Campbell. I love where you're born. You know that? It doesn't matter. It'll always be home. Right. I heard a good joke about it, though. <laughs> you're about the guy that in Texas, the guy from Little Rock, he's down in Texas, a highway patrolman stopped him. He says, Arkansas. He said, where are you from, boy? And he said, I'm from Little Rock. He said, what's your name? He said, my name's Bubba. He said, you got any ID? He said, about what? <laughs> Jimmy Webb wrote this song, and I'm glad he did. By the time I get to Phoenix, she'll be rising. She'll find the note I left hanging on her door And she'll laugh when she reads the part That says I'm leaving Cause I'd left that girl so many times By the time I make Albuquerque, she'll be working. She'll probably stop at lunch and give me a call. But she'll just hear that phone keep on ringing. That's all By the time I make Oklahoma She'll be sleeping She'll turn softly And call my name out low Lord, and she'll cry Just a thing Time and time I try to tell her so I guess she just didn't know I would really go No, she didn't know I'd go Aboard. Next stop on our tour of Branson is a trip aboard the Branson Scenic Railway. The train, with its Art Deco Zephyr cars, makes a daily hour and a half trip from Branson. Passing through some gorgeous scenery, what could be more enjoyable than gazing out at the trees dancing past your window? or glimpse a rolling river below. The Branson Scenic Railway lives up to its name. It's an ideal and restful way to enjoy the breathless beauty of the Ozark Mountains. And it's a perfect family outing. 
for old and young alike. How are you folks doing? Good. 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 Look at this. Hi, young fella. How are you? Good. Here, we're going to get you the tickets. Oh, you hang on. Oh, Yay! <laughs> As the train winds its way through the Ozarks, there are plenty of opportunities for a long look at the sweeping panoramas. From atop the many trestles that connect the hills, you can look down into yawning gorges. As the train snakes its way around another bend, close your eyes, hear the hypnotic cry of the train whistle and listen to the story of Branson's railroad past. In the 1870s, the railroad's arrival in nearby Springfield spawned a new industry, tie hacking, the making of railroad ties. Using a broad ax, workers would split the logs, then trim them to size. Or they would carry them on wagons to nearby tie yards stack them high, and feed the white oak into whirring saws. Impervious to wind and weather, these sturdy ties were hauled all over America. In the countless thousands, they literally tied this country together. Few events were more important in our history. In 1904, a trestle crossed the White River, tying the Branson of the past to the Branson of today. After a day trip, there's nothing like a night of entertainment with Ray Stevens, one of the funniest stars ever to grace a Branson stage. Thank you. Might I'll say a few words about my family tree right here. <laughs> Don't really know much about my family tree. Had an uncle once had Dutch Elms disease. <laughs> Reason I bring it up, point I'm going for here is that I think probably every branch of, of my family tree has a tire swing hanging off of it. <laughs> Both sides of my family are from rural America. One set of my grandparents lived so far back in the woods didn't nobody live behind them. <laughs> they had to go toward town to hunt. <laughs> One set of my grandparents lived down in Mississippi too, and I used to go down there every summer when I was a little kid and visit and stay all summer. And they'd take me to church every Sunday. Let me hear the amen card, guys. I'd take a trip every summer down to Mississippi and visit my granny and her antebellum work. I'd run barefooted all day long, climbing trees free as song. One day, I happened to catch myself a squirrel. Well, I stuffed him down in an old shoebox and punched a couple holes in the top. When Sunday came, I snuck him into church. I was sitting way back in the very last pew, showing him to my good buddy Hugh when that squirrel got loose, went totally berserk. But what happened next is hard to tell. Some thought it was heaven, others thought it was hell, but the fact that something was among us was plain to see. As the choir sang, I surrender all, the squirrel ran up hard and knew coveralls, and Harv leaped to his feet and said, something's got a hold on me, yeah! The day the squirrel went berserk, in the first self-righteous church In that sleepy little town of Pascagoula It was a fight for survival That broke out in revival They were jumping pews and shouting hallelujah Well, Harv hit the out dancing and screaming Some thought he had religion, others thought he had a demon And Harv thought he had a weed eater loose And he's through the looms <laughs> 
He fell to his knees to plead and beg, and that squirrel ran out of his breeches leg, unobserved, to the other side of the room. All the way down to the amen pew, where sat Sister Bertha better than you, who'd been watching all the commotion with sadistic glee. <laughs> Should have seen that look in her eyes when that squirrel jumped her garters and crossed her thighs. She jumped to her feet and said, Lord, have mercy on me. As that squirrel made laps inside her dress, she began to cry and then to confess the sins and make a sailor blush with shame. She told of gossip and church dissension, but the thing that got the most attention is when she talked about her love life. And then she started naming names the day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in that sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out Jumping pews and shouting, hallelujah. hallelujah. Well, seven deacons and the pastor got saved, and $25,000 was raised, and 50 volunteered for missions in the Congo on the spot. <laughs> and even without an invitation, there were at least 500 rededications, and we all got rebaptized whether we needed it or not. Now you've heard the Bible story, I guess, how he parted the waters for Moses to pass all oh, the miracles God has wrought in this old world. One I'll remember till my dying day is how he put that church back on the narrow way with a half-crazed Mississippi squirrel. The day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church in that sleepy little town of Pascagoula. It was a fight for survival that broke out in revival. They were jumping pews and shouting hallelujah. The day the squirrel went berserk in the first self-righteous church In a sleepy little town of Pascagoula It was a fight for survival They broke out in revival They were jumping pews and shouting Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Well, they were jumping pews and shouting Hey! Almost got me that time, boys. <laughs> Thank you. In 1861, the peaceful skies above Missouri were shattered by the Civil War, which broke like a summer storm across the land. A national battlefield at Wilson's Creek commemorates the landmark battle which claimed the lives of thousands, including the Union General, Nathaniel Lyon. This pivotal battle for control over the vital river supply lines into Texas and Arkansas is reenacted periodically. Though technically a slave state, Missouri chose to remain in the Union, so sympathies were fiercely divided. This truly was a state where brother fought against brother. Here we see the reenactors preparing for the dawn attack, which would surprise the Confederates' camp near the creek. They bided their time waiting with patient purpose the challenge they would face next day. When Johnny Comes Marching Home was a camp favorite, music helped calm anxious thoughts of the impending battle at Wilson's Creek and turned the mind to more pleasant memories of loved ones far away and the beautiful dreams they might one day share again. Starlight and dew 
raindrops are waiting for thee. Sounds of the rude world heard in the day, lulled by the moonlight, have all passed away. Beautiful dreamer, queen of my song, list while I woo thee with soft melody. Gone are the cares of life's busy throng. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Beautiful dreamer, awake unto me. Chanting the wild laurel over the streamlet, vapors are born, waiting to fade at the bright coming dawn. Oh, beautiful dreamer, be. Among the hills and hidden hollows of the Ozarks, nestled beneath the sheltering cedar and oak, you can still find remnants of times gone by and feel the presence of the sturdy people who first carved out a home in this raw wilderness. Imagine the life that transpired in this old cabin, the peaceful plucking of a mandolin or the joyous shouts of children playing capture the flag. They were a self-reliant folk, resourceful and proud, who faced life and adversity with a calm determination. Inside the country store, they swapped stories, bought their staples, or posted their mail. The young people went to one-room schoolhouses, learned to read and write, stick together and have a good time at what were called play parties where music filled the air. Today the past comes alive again at Silver Dollar City, one of the world's premier theme parks. Costumed reenactors recreate the past. Take a stroll past authentic buildings lovingly created and restored or listen to a lively description of, say, the Jesse James Gang. If you're lucky, walking down one of Silver Dollar's old streets, you might be just in time for some toe tapping music. Long tail coat that I used to wear, but I wear it in the chair in the morning. 
long white robe that I bought last June. I'm gonna have to change it a bit too soon. The old gray mare that I used to ride, I'm gonna hit you to the turn in the morning. Oh, them golden slippers, oh, them golden slippers, golden slippers are laid away. Life in the Ozarks was hard, especially for women, but they somehow seemed to bear it all with good spirits, even though most things had to be made, not bought. Many of the modern conveniences we take for granted were far from convenient then. No twist of a tap would bring you instant water. You had to carry it in from the well. Trim these wicks. No flick of the switch would light up a room. Wicks had to be trimmed and lamp oil replenished. No dust busters to keep the linen clean, just good old elbow grease applied with a thwack. <sighs> and yards of yarn to spin to the steady, gentle rhythm of the family spinning wheel. What you spinning at, Judy? Oh, a little bit of flax up in the linen thread. I got a project I need some of this to work on. You got a project going? I'm, I'm still working on it, but uh, it's just kind of up in my mind, but uh, it'll be nice when I get it figured out. <laughs> It could often be a quiet life like this, full of the peaceful enjoyment of home and hearth. But it could also be a time of hard work and long hours. Even children were expected to do their share in helping put food on the table. You might find a quiet moment to read or go hunting in the evening's fading light. Most days, however, were a constant succession of chore upon chore, sun up till sundown, seven days a week. Animal stomachs still demanded food, even on the Lord's Day. But it was not a life devoid of beauty, which was everywhere. The children can put the beans over on the other table, please. Yes, ma'am. The rhythms of life have accelerated a good deal since these days. 
Few families eat their dinner at noon as farmers once did, and children attend school without the seasonal breaks for planting and harvest. But some rhythms never change. Hey, boy, it's turned into a nice day out there, I'll tell you what. Nice warm one, we're way overdue for it. Yeah, makes you feel like getting something done for a change, you know? Hey, Ma, would you say the blessing? Sure will. God bless not only food and drink, but what we do and what we think. And may we, through our work and play, learn to love Thee more each day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Another family meal enjoyed in the company of loved ones. Another shared moment from that peaceful long ago time when nature's bountiful beauty filled the heart with joy and the setting of the sun marked the end of a well-lived day.